Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Westside Game Day, the special state championship edition of Westside Game Day. Today we're joined with a new face, Cole. Cole, how's it feel to be on Westside Game Day? Yeah, thank you, Grisham. Uh, it's great to be out here. You know, we have we have these amazing fans and an amazing student section, and uh, I think we have a great shot at this state championship game. And this week we're on a special spot, a change of scenery. We're at the spot where the Westside Rams clinched the upper state championship against Mazio and his TikTok squad. God, it felt good to put them away for the long run. You know, we thought we were going to see Northwestern. We did it, and we ended up seeing Mazio and his little goons, and they're never going to play football again. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into the picks. And before we get into the picks, this week, all your state championship tickets and parking passes will be in the Westside Barstool Instagram page as long as on uh, the Westside website. Yeah. And on Friday at 445, we're going to line the streets all the way down Pyramidary Road as the bus leaves to send them off to state. You, your mom, your uncle, you know, your aunt, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your, uh, your cousin, twice removed, but, you know, invited back three times. All of them should be here. Make signs, ring cowbells, just be loud. Let the city know who we are and let the city know who's going to state this week. You know, your West Side of Rams have not been to uh, state since 1986. We haven't won a state championship since integration back in 1969. It's a long time. It's been a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, you know everything that you need to know about the state championship game. Now let us tell you who's going to win it. First up, we've got the 1A state championship. And before we get into the picks, let's dive a little bit into that game. The Christchurch Cavaliers versus Johnsonville Flashes. What a matchup this will be. <laughs> Battle of the prep schools. Not a kid who goes to either of these schools live there, but you know what? It's okay. The Christchurch offense significantly better than the Johnsonville offense, outscoring them by 10 points a game. Christchurch star-studded everywhere. Deshaun Reeder rushing for 115 yards a game and Tucker Hendricks passing for 195 a game. You know, I think this game's not going to be close. Uh, shout out my buddy William Margie, who plays for Christchurch. Give me Christchurch big in this game. Cole? Yeah, uh, I've seen Christchurch play. I really don't know who the Johnsonville Flashes are. Um, and I think I think Christchurch is going to come out here 40 to 20. Give me Christchurch. I also like Christchurch in this game. Never heard of Johnson Flashes, whatever it's called, but Christchurch, good team to be 1A. I think they roll big. Uh, uh, Johnsonville, the traditional public school here versus a private school. Uh, Tale is all this time in the lower uh, 1A and 2A ranks where a private school gets to play against a smaller public school that has a little bit of pride. I really would love to pick Johnsonville. Um, being as how those kids are loyal, probably grew up there, probably played rec ball there, and Christchurch gets to kind of pick who they want to play for them, but I'm going to go with Christchurch here just because I want to win. Yeah, I think Christchurch is just a more talented football team. I don't really know anything about Johnson. Okay. Yeah. I don't really know anything <laughs> about Johnsonville, but, yeah, I think the Cavaliers win it by 20. Great. All right, you heard it here first, folks. You know what, and it's worth mentioning that neither of these teams will – well, you know what, one of these teams might be one in next year. But neither of these teams will be 1A. Christchurch will be 6A <laughs> because not a single player that goes to their school lives there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's get in the 2A state championship game. You have two prep schools, Oceanside versus Gray Collegiate. Uh, both teams pretty good. Not really any stats over here for Oceanside, but give me Oceanside in a close game. You know, uh, Oceanside versus Gray Collegiate, I really do not like either of these football teams just because of the fact that they recruit and do this, that, and the other. You know, the Abbeville Panthers are the storied team in 2A. Abbeville Panthers are the powerhouse of 2A and the kings of 2A until Gray Collegiate came along and uh, made sort of a bootleg IMG, if you will. So with that being said, Gray Collegiate could be Abbeville. Give me Gray Collegiate in the close game. So we got Gray Collegiate, okay, versus Oceanside Academy. Um, sounds like two uh, Sun Belt schools there. But uh, it's 2A football, um, and like Grisham said, I, I really I gotta give a shout out to Abbeville, who does it the right way. Um, 
develops their kids from the time they're five years old, uh, playing in rec ball all the way up, and they suffered a tough loss last week to Gray. Uh, with that being said, these two football teams are good teams. You know, you can't take that away from them. Um, both of them could be in 4A next year, so we could we could run into them. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Gray Collegiate in this one. Just like Swag and Gray said, you I mean, you don't like them, but they're good. Great Collegiate, they uh, dethroned the Kings of 2A, Abbeville, so that's what I got to take. Cool. Yeah, both of these teams have a, uh, a great shot at State, I think. I mean, as as Grisham said, they both recruit highly. But uh, I just I just don't think Great Collegiate's going to take this one. Uh, give me Oceanside. Okay, Cole. Upset, I like it. I like it. All right, Cole. Let's deep dive into the 3A state championship. Ooh, All right, for the 3A Woo! state championship, we have the Camden Bulldogs against the Daniel Lions. Camden 11 and 3, and okay. Daniel at okay. 14 and uh, and and I've seen Camden play, and you know they have their ups and downs, and. You know, watching Daniel against BHP with that fumble recovery, I mean, we all know it happened. Uh, you know, Daniel's been playing their hearts off, and uh, give me Daniel. I yeah. like it. Wait, are we not? Good pick. I'm saying I like it. He likes right. it. Sorry. Right. Right. Great pick, Cole. Uh, I'm also going to rock with Daniel. You know, uh, them, and da them and BHP was just on a collision course all year. They faced them. Marquise fumbled at the end of the game. They took it. Good. Uh, they got a good defense. Uh, I got them wrong. Never heard of Canada. Um, this is going to be a good good game. Uh, Camden has lost three games, and I watched a press conference yesterday. Their coach coach did mention those three losses as being a positive for that team. Um, and and rumor is Daniel uh, is no longer going to be able to just roll through a weak uh, region schedule uh, moving forward. Uh, rumor has it they might even be in our region next year. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, but I just think Daniel has a history. They're used to being here. Um, they're 14 and 0 for a reason. Um, although Camden's coach does have a mean beard, I'm going to go with Daniel in this one. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't noticed a trend yet, I'll point it out to you. We're only picking upper state teams because upper state football is so elite this year. You know, the lower state, if they're catching losses, three losses in the lower state, I just don't see how I can pick them. Uh, this pick goes out to my buddy Mo, who is a two-time state championship winner at Daniel. Great for I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick the Lions. Big here. Oh yeah, Daniel and BHP both rolled through the season. Daniel beat them last week playing Camden. Don't know who Camden is. Three losses. Give me Daniel by 30. I think it's a blowout. Big. Yeah, the whole team's getting PWOs after this. Absolutely. From Dabo himself. All right, and ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into the 5A state championship. Whoa. And that's me. I got 5A. Um, and some of you may know, uh, this matchup is Dutch Fork versus White Knoll. Um, Dutch Fork is 9-5, and, and White Knoll is a perfect 14-0. and 0. Uh, Those records are extremely deceiving. Um, before I, I had the pleasure of getting hired here at Westside, I was teaching and coaching at Dutch Fork, so I have a lot of, lot of friends that still coach there. Actually, my best friend in college coaches at White Knoll. So I do know, know a little bit about both these teams. Region opponents, uh, they are in the same region, and they, they're matching up in the state championship. Five is a little weird because they split the regions. Um, and White Knoll won the first matchup. Um, it was a close game. It was a defensive battle. Nobody in the state is playing better than Dutch Fork right now. Coach Tom Knotts, uh, there's a reason he's won. He, you know, he won 100 games in a row at one point. Um, and Ooh. and I, I you know, White Knoll is 14 and 0. Uh, but I'm gonna go with the Silver Foxes in this one. Uh huh. I right, pick uh, Agnello. Let me ask you this: How many close games has Dutch Fork had with teams that they should not have close games with? Uh, their five losses were against five good. How I'm an out of state team? However, Georgia, three of them Georgia. However, T. L. Hanna High School, in my opinion, should not have been close. J. L. Mann losing the the four A Greenville, Greenville like, like was close. A comeback that win. True, Good White Knoll has dominated everybody they've played this year. Give me White Knoll by two touchdowns. Okay, okay. White Knoll undefeated. Dutch Fork five losses. White Knoll beat Dutch Fork. I don't think you come in the state championship game and beat Dutch Fork twice. I don't think it happens. Give me Dutch Fork by 20. I like that. Uh, it's very hard to be the same team twice in a year. Uh, White Knoll did take the first one. Like he said, no one's playing better than Dutch Fork. They're on a roll right now. So I got I got Dutch Fork taking it. Shout out Coach Martin. He said don't bet against Tommy Knox. Uh, you know, I gotta think. I gotta think like Grisham here with Dutch Fork. You know, they they've had all these close games, and you know White Knoll with this 14 and 0 slate, they're just. I think they're unbeatable. Uh, give me, give me White Knoll. Mm. You know, Trent, you you say it's hard to beat a team twice. 
I'm starting to think that's not true. I'm starting to think that's like don't get in the pool within an hour of eating. You know well, that's I mean? Greenville. So <laughs> because that, we, that we come out here, we come out here in the Upper State Championship on Mazio's Revenge Tour. Right? Mazio Bennett doesn't count. We come on Mazio's Revenge Tour. You know Greenville's tearing up everybody they're playing. Yeah. They're beating teams like crazy. They went out and beat Greenwood, Mazio's who we back. kept it within a touchdown, and they blew Greenwood out. Greenville was playing their best, and we still had an answer for them. I mean, right here, you were there. I, we were right there. I don't think the can't beat a team twice thing is a real statement. White Major's Noel has not had a close game this year. I think it is insane to pick Dutch for. Major's the third best receiver on that team. We did. We did beat Greenville twice, and Trenton did say it was tough to beat a team twice. Was that game tough the second time? It, okay, yes. It, it was, was tough. tough. It was tough. And, it, and if, Dutch, if it's a close game, Dutch Fork has Tommy the experience. Knox, They've Tommy been Knox. in five out of the last six state championships. White Noel hasn't been there yet. No, it's gonna be a good one. We'll, we'll see. The road we'll see comes happens. to an end for White Knowles tonight. Right. Before we break down these state championship games, I had, we had a chance to talk to some of our players and our, our teachers, and let's listen to what state means at Westside High School. It's like how y'all come together so good this year, make it so far. Uh, first, when Coach Lane came, bro, we just started connecting. Bro. We started doing a lot more stuff. Breakfast and champions that really made us tough right there. Us just coming together and playing together as brothers. Like Coach Lane said, we closed that fish and got that golf there. Gotcha. So, Trent, how would you say that the team coming together, not only on the Fridays, but on Sundays, has affected our season so far? Okay, that's good. Um, I think, you know, everybody wanting to come to church, everybody like uh, getting text messages and coming to church and texting other people who come to church. Uh, that's pretty big. Like, people who want it. Because you know about God and learn more about him, I think that bring you to the field. So, Gabe, this team is more of a spiritual team than I think any team in the state. And, you know, we asked Trenton Galloway about how, how the team meets on Sundays. What are your thoughts about how the team meets on Monday nights? Uh, I feel like us all coming together as one, not just football, but, like, after, you know, practice and stuff on Mondays and getting close with God helps us as a team advance in the playoffs and hopefully win it. So how's the how's like the game day feeling different from coaching? It's, it's crazy down here. I mean, you know, it's all just packed out. Yeah. The energy is wild. Like, I don't know how to explain it. How does off the line come together on a week to week basis? Well, during the season, before the season, they gathered us very much. But I feel like this whole line, this season, we really connect. We hang out almost every day, just us together. And I feel like us doing that has built our chemistry very well to where we can we can just connect on the field. Right. What what did it take to get you know some of these guys in a situation where you know they come up in big time games just like we did on Friday? Right? Just I mean you you practice it all the time. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like and we just it's just rep it. It's just rep to do and at the end of the day, you know, all we need is four downs. Absolutely. Four downs, four downs, get a stop and the stuff they showed us we uh we had practice and you know the kids bought in. Oh, when I got here, um, it's been a long, long season. You know, Absolutely. Good, bad, ugly. We got it done. You know, we got the opportunity. You know, four more quarters, four eight more minutes to you know do those things. Like so how, how's it feeling? How's it feeling being a Western for so long? And the uh, it's been, it's been, a, it's been an enjoyable experience. It's been a little different um, coming from where I came from to here six years ago. Uh, coming from a place that is used to being and doing stuff like this. I'm just glad that the town's getting to experience something and these kids have worked their butt off to get to where they are. Um, and, the, and, the, and hopefully the community will, will come together Saturday at 12 o'clock and, and do something. Hey, Nella, how does it feel in the school the day after we've proceeded to the state championship? It feels awesome. I mean... And not just in the school and the community. Uh, a lot of people are talking about Westside. Um, we got a lot of positive energy that carried over from Friday into the school. Um, hopefully, it helps the school as a whole academically. You know, the other athletic programs. It's going to be awesome. Appreciate it, coach. Yeah. So, Dorian, you've read almost every Friday the football team before the game. Some of the last time I read so far. It's hard to say. I really, I really couldn't tell you, but. How do you think, do you think that you're the West Side good luck charm? Because it seems like every time you read to the West Side Rams, they win. And they take a prize for them. They do take a prize Yes. Them. How do those guys make you feel? Happy. They make you feel happy? And glad. So, and proud. 
very proud of those guys. Yes. Are they kind of like good looking? Are they, you are very good looking. Yeah. Are they kind of like family? Yes. yes. That's nice. Yes. Well, so Dorian, are you going to be reading on this Friday? Yes. Not yeah. necessarily. You are? But yeah. the, I might be too. But probably Saturday. Okay. Dorian, do you have a message for the people who uh, don't know if they're going to land yet? Uh, sure. West Side 28 and uh, uh, South Florence. So 21. West Side 28, South Florence 21? Yes. Good thing, Dorian. I appreciate you coming out here. I know the amount of effort and time that they have put into preparing for this, and I am just so proud of them, and I am just so excited that um, we get to witness this and experience this, and I just can't express how much I am very, very proud of them and their hard work. Ms. Foster, how does it feel? What's the state championship feeling like at Westside? I want to congratulate the football team this year. I have been here 33 years, so I am so excited for the team, and especially for all the guys that I've been able to teach that's on the team. I want to give them a big shout out and say good luck, and I will be there supporting you 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, for the last time ever on the last game day show ever, to the last time we'll ever pick a game for the West Side Rams. Ever. You know, we're going against 14 and 0 South Florence, the defending 4A state champions, actually. Okay. Okay. South Florence, you know, they're a good team. They got a good rushing attack with uh, number 22, Zion Gilbert. Actually, he's averaging 106 yards a game. They don't really do much throwing the ball. The quarterback's only averaging 53 yards a game. Um, good defense, but, you know, we've been on a roll this whole year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. this is a big group of seniors. I think we play really inspired this Saturday. Mm -hmm. like 1969, it. we're bringing it back to Anderson, South Carolina, Westside High School. Let's go. Absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Cole, what do you think? Talk to us. Talk this to game, us, Cole. this game, I do think this is going to be a very good game here. South Florence, the defending chance. But you know, Westside, after their first loss against BHP, I think we just, we're hungry. We're hungry for that state championship win, you know. We got the, one of the best receiving cores we've ever had. Our running backs are electric. Got new coaching staff, pretty much a whole new coaching staff. Give me Westside. <laughs> Cole, you know, I like that pick. You know, it's uh, it's really easy. It's really easy to get caught up in all the hype. Like with Midland Valley, they've got the best running back in the state. And, you know, some people would say Greenville's got one of the best receiver cores in the state. Because let's be Good real call. here, guys. The Westside Rams have climbed up mountains that nobody thought we were going to climb up. We come out and we lose our first game and everybody's mm -hmm. discouraged. We come out and we beat the Crosstown Rivals in a controlling football game. Then mm -hmm. we sweep our region. We beat Greenville the first time. We beat them the second time. Then mm -hmm. we go to Midland Valley with the best running back in the state and we have an answer for him. Yes, we do. And I don't think we've played our best game yet. No. Ooh. We've got the it's best offense in the state. South Florence is going to be a test. They are a, they are a darn good football team. They're very big, very physical. But guys, I don't see how you can go out and tell the West Side Rams that you can't that we're gonna beat you. Yeah, absolutely. Because everybody who has done that has been wrong. Give me West Side 21 to 14. You know what? South Florence is a pretty good football team. But listen, Tank, Josh, Sherrod, D, Cutter Woods himself. Our whole offense is absolutely crazy. And I think we have more heart than any team in this state. I think we win this game by seven. Absolutely. I like those picks, guys. Um, <clears throat> South Florence is 14-0. Um, they have been basically blowing everyone out, except for they were blowing Irmo out last week, and Irmo made a comeback at the end there. Um, they won the state championship last year, and they are drastically different. Um, they have probably one of the best high school quarterbacks I've ever laid my eyes on on their team last year. And this year, they run the ball. Um, and they, I think last week they ran it three times total. Um, so our defense is going to be extremely tested against that offensive line. Um, you mean threw the ball? I just, I, yeah, they threw the ball three times last week. Thank you for correcting me. Um, and they threw the ball three times last week, and they're going to come, they're going to line up, and they're going to run the ball at us. And our defense is going to be challenged. Um, it's going to be. Grisham talked about mountains. This is going to be the, the, the tallest mountain to climb. Mount Everest. It's, it's, it's the last one, and it's the tallest one. South Florence is the best team we've faced, and I don't think it's close. Um, but with that being said, um, we have been the underdog, some would say, in probably several games this year. Every um, game we've played. We People probably thought we would lose to BHP. Yeah. We did drop that game. <laughs> people yeah. thought we were going to lose to Hannah. We won that game. People thought we were going to lose to Greenville the first time. We won that game, okay. kind of going away. All right. People thought we were going to lose to Midland Valley. We, we won, won that game. game. People thought we were going to lose to Greenville. We won that, that game. game. And because we've been battle-tested, 
And upper state football, in my opinion, is way better than lower state football. I don't think it's debatable. 4A is the best classification. 4A is Definitely. probably the best classification in basketball yeah. and beat, football yeah, this year. We would beat Dutch football and, and White Knoll right now. Um, so I think because of that, us being battle-tested, us being in that underdog role before, us being the hunters, I think that's going to give us the slight edge here. Maybe I'm saying maybe 24-23. We're going to come down to a two-point conversion, an extra point, or something like that. Well, under pressure, the West Side Rams roll. Ladies and gentlemen, before we sign off here, I would like to, on behalf of all of West Side, the teachers, faculty, and staff, um, I would like to thank you three seniors up here for all that you guys have done week in and week out. Uh, this has been probably by far the best student section that we have ever had at West Side, the best school spirit we've had. This show takes a lot of time and energy, and I don't think a lot of people realize how much you guys have put into uh, your school, and I want to thank you for being loyal. To, to your public school and, and where you grew up and staying here and not entering the transfer portal. Yeah. I'd like to thank all of the football players for the same thing. Yeah. Um, Kirkus, Grishel, Trent, One more uh, you guys have been a pleasure to teach and be around. And, and I just let's look at a little bit of the highlight right. and let's look at the West Side Rams 2023 season. Ladies and gentlemen, Grisham Moore Cup for the last time ever. See you guys Saturday, signing off. Jacob Kirkus, I'm gonna catch y'all. Trent Slayton, last time ever. And you'll see Cole next year. I'll oh. see y'all next year. <laughs> next up, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this has been West Side Game Day. You know what? Let's not be sad because it's State Week. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Yeah. Throw your hands up. Throw your hands up. Throw your hands up. Where you at? 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 All they see is black venom in my silhouette. Just watch the fear reappear in their eyes when I hit the set. Oh no.